Hello, I'm Atuba George, and I bless God for this new week that we've come into. Listen, God is doing amazing things this week in your life and in our nation. I know something amazing is happening this week. Praise God. So let your heart be filled with expectations and let God fulfill his love to you. God loves you. Oh, you better know that. You, you just better know that he loves you. And how do I know that God loves me? He sends his words to you. See? And now when you, what do you do with his word that he sends to you? You receive it. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my word. Now, before he will say keep my word, it means his word has been given to you. So you see, God responds. God shows his love or demonstrates his love first by releasing his word to you. And now he says, if you love me, that word I have sent, sent to you, keep it. Now that's how we do it. Praise God. So I know because his word is coming this week, you are going to see the manifestation of his truth. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, we honor you today. Thank you, Lord, because as your truth is being made known right now, burdens are being removed, yokes are being destroyed by the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for you're not holding back anything that is profitable to us. For we receive freely our daily bread. Oh, blessed Lord Jesus, thank you. Thank you. Healings, diverse kinds of miracles are taking place right now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. Turn your Bibles with me to 1 Corinthians. We've been on 1 Corinthians um, all this while. And we are in chapter 15. Now, if you, you are just joining us, in this study maybe you're just receiving the video and, and i want to appreciate those of you who actually share this video with, with with your friends today i just want to appreciate you you are blessed the glory of god is revealed in your life as you've become an extension of my ministry because that's exactly what you're doing i declare in the name of the lord jesus god is bringing partners your way to partner with whatever you have set your heart to do in the name of the lord jesus christ amen praise god so so if you if you're just joining this study or you're just receiving this why don't you just subscribe to our youtube channel and you can get all that videos we've, we've been on first corinthians from chapter one now we're in chapter 15 so you can get the rest on, on YouTube, praise God. So, so we stopped at verse 28. Let me read 28 again. It says, And when all things shall be subdued under him, then shall the Son also himself be subject unto him that put all things under him, that God may be all in all. Did you see that? Now I explained last week. I said, the Father is the one who is subduing under everything under the feet of Jesus. Now when he did that, he didn't put himself under the feet of Jesus, see? So when he's done putting everything under the feet of Jesus, then he, Jesus, now becomes subject to the Father. Now, do you know what that means? It means everything is now subdued or subject to the Father. Are you trying to say some things are not? You need to understand this. You see, God has given Jesus the authority over all things. But the fact that you have received the authority over all things doesn't mean everything is obeying you yet. It's like you, you become, maybe you are elected the president of your nation or the governor of your state. Yes, you may be the governor or the president, but it doesn't mean you're, everyone is subject to your rulership. See, you know that doesn't just happen automatically. You, are, you take the responsibility of winning them or subduing them to be under your rule. See, because there are some people who just would not like you and they say, we are not part of this government. We are revolting. Anything you want to do, we are opposing it. See, you're not ruling over such people. So you, you need to apply your own wisdom to make sure that your whole domain is under your rulership. Yes, people will disagree with you, but it doesn't mean they will oppose your rulership. As for the rulership aspect, it is your responsibility to see to it that you reign in all your sphere. 
Praise God. So Jesus is, has been given authority over all things already. But, you know, he is, everything is coming one after the other. I explained that to you last week. One after the other, all things are coming under his feet. And what is his feet? We are his body. So when he says his feet, he's talking about our feet. Praise God. Did you get that? So that's what he's saying. Now then, let's go on. He said, Else, what shall they do which are baptized for the dead? If the dead rise not at all, why are they then baptized for the dead? Now, they had this practice in Corinth then, uh, where, you know, at that time, where they baptized people, living people for dead people. Now, whatever their reason was, we, 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 I mean, this is the only time we see Paul mentioning this. So we don't know the story behind this. But it was, I mean, for, for Paul to say this, that means it was happening. Now, this doesn't also mean that it was right. Paul is not approving of it. He is, you know, you are trying to explain something to people. So you look for something they are used to. For example, in, in Acts of the Apostles, when, when, when Paul got to Athens, you know, and then he was talking to them at Mass Hill. Now, he, he was trying to communicate to them and he, and he said something. He said, look, you guys, I, I perceive that you guys are, are into worship of several gods. And then he said, in fact, while we were coming, we, we saw a notice, a sacrifice that was offered to, and the notice there was to the unknown God. And guess what Paul said? He said, now, that unknown God is the one I have come to talk to you about. Now, does that mean Paul was endorsing all the sacrifice they were doing to several gods? No, but he was trying to reach out to them. So he was coming to their level. Like he said to the Jew, I became a Jew so that I will reach, I will win some Jews, Jewish people. See, that's, that's exactly what he said. So now, talking here, he is communicating the resurrection to them. So he said, if you guys don't, if you guys are saying there is no resurrection, then you guys that are baptizing for the dead, why do you do that? Are you getting this now? So it says, and verse 30 says, and why stand we in jeopardy every hour? Why do we put our lives at risk every hour? See, now there are people who, who risk their lives for this gospel. Oh, yes. If you've not gotten to that point where you, 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 you have to choose between life and the gospel. I didn't say life and death. We must understand how we communicate this thing. It's not life and death. It's life. That means live your physical life or preach the gospel. And I said, eh, but, but does that, doesn't that mean that if you, if you choose? No. The gospel has life. You need to understand that. And it has the ability to keep you. I remember one time, you know, sometimes, thank you for the Holy Spirit. Lord, thank you, thank you, thank you for giving us the Holy Spirit. I'm, I'm, I'm serious about this. You know, because, oh, shall we, we'll, we'll get there. We'll get there. We'll, we'll see how, I want to explain something. I just remember that the scripture is even down here as we, as, we, as we go. Now, watch this. So it says, why do we stand in jeopardy every hour? Why do we risk our lives if there's no resurrection? It's foolishness then. So we're doing this because we believe in resurrection. I got to that point in my life several years ago, 1999. Yeah, I was sick, very sick then. And I was believing God for healing. I got to that point where I set my heart. I said, look, if this word spoke about healing, then I must experience it in my body. So listen, I don't want no doctor's advice. I don't want no, 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 don't give me any advice. I'm, I'm ready to put this thing to work until it works in my physical body by bringing healing to this body right now. Now one day, I will never forget that day. I, I know it was October. Yes, October 19th. I, I can't remember the exact date, but between 21 and 22nd of October, 1999. And I said to myself, you know what? What's the worst thing that can happen to me? Death. And I said, at that time, based on my understanding, I said, well, if I die, I'll stand before the Lord Jesus, right? And when I stand before the Lord Jesus, I'm I only have one question for him. And what's that question? What did I do wrong? Or what didn't I do right? And I'm sure he's going to explain to me. And when he explains to me, I know the next thing I'm going to say to him, Lord, thank you for this explanation. I wish I got it while on earth. Now I take permission. I want to go back and do 
this thing you have just told me. And I remember thinking then, I said, but they say, when, when you get to heaven, you wouldn't want to come back. I said, not me. He said, because I, I'm, not, I'm not thrilled about going to heaven. Because I understand fully that it's our home. See, I'm more concerned about doing the thing. Because what, what am I going to do there? You know, then the idea is, you know, we'll just be worshiping God every day. Hey, this is where the life is. This is where the battle is. This is where the victory is. I want to win victories for Jesus. Praise God. That was my thinking then. So I'm going to say to him, Lord, I want to go back. And what if the Lord says, no, say, there's going to be a revolt. <laughs> I'm telling you what my thinking was. And I, it became my resolve that what, then I was really, really sick. You know, when you're so sick, those thoughts are coming to your mind. I said, you know what, I will prove this word. Sometimes we need to get to that point. Because I'll tell you what, it was after I made that decision, the voice, voice of the Lord came to me. And, and all God spoke. When he spoke, I responded to his word. And that was it. Sickness gone till this day. Praise God. So sometimes when we say we live in divinity, people don't understand. We put our lives in jeopardy if we don't believe that there's resurrection of the dead. See? Now, now that's a question to ask yourself. Now, then watch then. He says, I protest by your rejoicing which I have in Christ Jesus our Lord. I die daily. See? <laughs> it's nothing to me. Mm. Now watch this, verse 32. If, if after the manner of men I have fought with beasts at Ephesus, what advantage it me if the dead rise not? Rise not, not let us eat and drink for tomorrow we die. See, what's the point? Like I told you last week, I mean, if this whole thing is not true, if this whole thing we talk about resurrection of the dead, you know, Jesus coming back, if all these things is not true, then it's like he said in, in earlier verse, he said, we have most men, all men most miserable. Think about it. Just imagine how you would have lived. How, imagine, Imagine all the opportunities you had to steal and, and do some runs and, and make some cold money. And say, like, hey, no, 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 I can't do this. I can't, no, no, that's not me. And I would be, why didn't I just do it? Pack all the money, enjoy it, travel anywhere I want to travel to and just live my life. And whenever death comes, yes, we are, we are, at least we rock the life. <laughs> Praise God. It's, that's what Paul says. I mean, if, if this thing is not working, if this thing is not real, what's the point then? Let's just eat and drink and then tomorrow we die. Now look at what he said in verse 30. He says, Be not deceived. Evil communication corrupt good manners. Now this is the key to every downward life any believer have lived. It says evil communication. Evil communication corrupts good manners. Praise God. Yeah. See, it says be not deceived. Don't allow anyone deceive you. How do they deceive you? By evil communication. What is evil communication? Speaking words that are not true. Every word that doesn't fall in line with God's truth is an evil communication. Yeah, that's true. You know, sometimes people, oh, ah, it, it, I have seen people who believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, believing in Him, walking their faith, and then suddenly, you know, they, they begin, began to question, not, not, not question per se, but doubt His truth. And their lives begin to go down. And their lives begin to go down. That's evil communication by the people you're listening to. It's not everyone you should listen to. You must be careful what you allow to enter into your heart. Oh, sure. Anything that would take your faith away is an evil communication to you. Praise God. We've got to stop here right now. Listen, I'm going to continue from here tomorrow. And I pray for you that the Spirit of God today will open up His treasure. Thank you, Lord Jesus, and that you receive great blessings 
In Jesus' name, amen. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.